You know what this is. A commercial? Right, and you know what that means. <sighs> Time for a snack? Wrong. I want you to do some heart-healthy exercise. Yes, you! Try some seated leg extensions right now. Just lift each leg up and extend it straight one at a time, six to eight times. I can do that. Yes, you can. Remember, every commercial is a chance to sneak in heart-healthy activity. Visit findexerciseanywhere.com and speak with your doctor to learn more about the risks of heart failure. When the weather outside is frightful, the Hyundai Santa Fe is... Hmm, what's the word? Delightful. Because it's got available H-Track all-wheel drive to make being out together better. Enter for your chance to win the newly redesigned Santa Fe, packed with all the jingle bells and whistles you need to go dashing through the snow together. To enter, visit Amazon.com slash Hyundai or scan the QR code on specially marked red and green Amazon boxes. No purchase necessary. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Jay Delsing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go On the Range with Jay Delsing. On the Range is brought to you by Pro-Am Golf. Hey, good morning, St. Louis. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Pearlie. Is sitting right here with me. Good morning, Pearl. What's happening? Good morning. Just uh, glad we're in this nice, warm little uh, studio here, ready to roll. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, weather's turned, baby. It's turned. It's not good. Um, we formatted this show like a round of golf, and the first segment is called the On the Range segment. It's brought to you by Pro Am Golf. Uh, Dan Kirchhoff, my buddy, is their new president. If you need anything, you need shoes, you need lessons, you want a great gift ideas, you want a gift card, you want to get somebody some lessons, Pearly, you need to know what, you want to get meat for Christmas? I'm getting lessons with you that I'm not having to pay for. Oh, 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 hey, nope, you're going to call 314-781-7775, ask for Craig, that's over at Pro-Am Golf. Um, check out our social media outlets. Just at Jay Delsing, he'll get you somewhere close, and if you feel like following us, come on over. We'll take you. Pearly's in charge, and so we're streamlining our social media processes. See, it's already streamlined. Yeah. All right. Uh, we want to thank Bob and Kathy Donahue for uh, supporting the show. You need anything done in your home, in your home, Donahue Painting and Refinishing is the person to call, 314-805-2132. They have safe, professional guys coming inside, outside, whatever you need, getting it done and doing a phenomenal job. All right, Pearl, I got an interview this week. It's a little short interview, but it's from a guy named Ed Wheatley, who's the president of the St. Louis Historical Society of the St. Louis Browns. Now, why would you think I'm going to have somebody for the St. Louis Browns? I know the story. I know the story. Jimmy Delsing. Jimmy Delsing, for sure. Jimmy Delsing and the, the midget. Short person. Pinch running, pinch hitting, whatever that was. Yep. It's a trivia question. Yep. It's, it's famous. It's infamous. Stumped Howard Cosell. Most people, none of the young guys <laughs> listening are like, Howard who? I don't even know that guy. Um, yeah, so we got that coming up. Um, all right, so I did some some digging because, you know, I have a... Because you got a shovel. I've got a big staff to work with here. Staff of none. Staff of none. Staff Just of me. one. Staff of one. No, so I was looking at the, the world uh, the the world golf rankings and just messing around with it, and still... Probably from my seat, didn't give a DJ nearly enough credit for just whacking the field at Augusta like he did. Just spectacular job. And um, started digging in. You know, he's world number one. He's go. He right now he's currently tied for the number of weeks. And you can actually check some of these numbers, you guys, because these are if not exactly right, they're going to be. They're close. Yeah, I could have typoed them and made a mistake, <laughs> but I didn't look all this stuff up for 106 <laughs> weeks. He's been the number one player in the world, tied for third with Rory, okay? For the most weeks in the number one spot. Yes. Yep. And so this next week, when, um, uh, oh, no, no, this week, as we're playing, uh, he's going to pass Rory and go to third by himself. And he is uh, not really that close to number two. Greg Norman oh. spent 331 weeks as the number one player in the world. And he wasn't very close to the number it's one. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's very impressive. Yeah. And he wasn't very Go close ahead. to the and he wasn't very close to the number one. No, he wasn't. 
So in case you're wondering who was number one and for how long? We all know who it was. How long was it? Eldrick Tiger Woods. He was only the number one player in the world for... 683 weeks. So, so DJ only needs to stay number one for 11 more years and he'll tie Tiger. <laughs> well, I'm not sure he can do it for 11 years, but I'll tell you what. I like watching that guy play golf. He gets up there and just bangs it and goes and... What's his favorite club in the bag? Driver. I'm driver. hitting driver, bro. That's what he told me at Oakmont. Hey, Dustin, how are you going to play number two? I'm hitting driver, bro. I'm unleashing the driver, bro. I'm Good. hitting driver everywhere. You and I have talked about that. I was just chuckling when I was thinking about what we were talking about. It's a beautiful thing when you can commit ahead of time to what you're going to do. The problem is I've done that before, committed ahead of time, and it was it worked out really poorly. It, not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go your way, <laughs> no, does it? It doesn't. But, yeah, as you said, there's a lot of reasons he should like his driver a lot. Because he is so good with it and stuff. But he does know that it's a weapon, and he does absolutely go with it. And it's got to go, be nice to go to bed at night, and he already knows what that he wherever possible he's going to hit a driver. There's none of this, well, should I hit that three-wood? Should I hit that three-iron out there to the corner? No, I'm going to hit the driver. Nope. He's going to hit the driver. And um, Rory said that Dustin Johnson has the single best attitude in the planet for golf because he's just – things are just – Think about what happened to this dude, Pearl. Yeah, exactly. He, he's got a 20-foot putt the first year we're doing the TV out at Chambers Bay to be the first man ever to make eagle on the final hole to win a U.S. Open. It's a 20-footer. <laughs> it's it's almost hard to, to go on from there. If he two putts, we're all coming back Monday for a playoff between Jordan Spieth and DJ. And if he three putts, we're all going home. And I'm going to play the... the uh, and Speed gets to be the champion. And, and, and Speed gets to be the champion. And that's what happened. And you know what? Who won the U.S. Open the very next year? DJ at Oakmont. Well, and, did... and, sorry, but I need to say this. The way he won at Oakmont and what the USGA did to try to ruffle his feathers, so to speak, and that's as nice as I could possibly put it. He either doesn't it. have feathers or they can't ruffle exactly. them. One of, the, one of the two. But that is 100% well, true. Plus, you're leaving out, there's another little uh, event that they had uh, on the tour when uh, it looked like he had a good chance to win and then all of a sudden didn't win. Oh, yeah, that was, that came years before. You're talking about a whistling straight? Whistling straight. straight. So he, but he's had a couple of those that other people in their careers that have had those experiences, you never hear from again. Pearl, what about, what about the huge lead he had at the U.S. Open at Pebble? And shot 82. Oh. I mean, that was brutal. Remember, all of a sudden, he's off to a, to a start where... That's when he couldn't chip at all. And yep. he knew he couldn't chip, and he was on a couple of... Got, that just brought chills to my mind, how bad his chip... Did he even... Did he double chip one in the second or third hole? I mean... And either he, he, that or he it chipped twice it backwards or, just, or something yeah. like that. It was... It was yeah, it was ugly. in that cocoon, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. If you know how to chip, oh, no. you don't look I've never look been like, in there. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Or, or, or <laughs> not. Or I have. That's a tough one. Yeah, it's not good. I, li- I like that guy. I think he's fun. I think people like to watch him play. His attitude's fantastic. So I hope he stays up there for a long time and let those boys uh, bring it on. Plus, you know what? It's kind of cool. There's he plenty lo- to bring on, too. He looks like an athlete. Probably, a- and in, my an athlete. Estimation, in my estimation, the best athlete to ever play golf. Wow. Wow. How do you come up with that? I just, I, I, everything he does looks like someone just, hey, just give me a stick and a ball and show me what, where the court is. Hey, give me uh, this and show me what to do. He, the kid swims like a fish. He dunks a basketball standing under the basket with two hands. He, he's, he's truly an athlete. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I like that. It makes, it gives the, 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 the the sport a little bit more credibility, although a lot of these guys are looking like an athlete, yep. but I think this guy can go, yep. uh, go out there and do the other sports. He also he also, he also, also has that mentality where it's like, where, what's next? Yeah. What's next? Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. He's all a right. shooter. Go, yep. It's like, a, like in the NBA, uh, letter rip or defensive back in the NFL, you know, what's just the next play? Forget about all that other Larry stuff. Larry Bird story comes to mind. Okay. Larry Bird in college, purest, one of the purest shooters we've yep. ever seen, right? He's having a nightmare night. And goes something like two for thirty, and their team's tied, and uh, they get the ball with like eight seconds left. All the time out, Indiana State, right? And they designed f- the play for Larry, and you know, the guys on the team are like, and Larry's like unfazed, right? Comes right off the screen, bounce pass, gets past his man, drills it, game over. And afterwards, the media of course, said, "Of course, Larry, how the hell? What what just happened? You couldn't hit the broad side of the barn." All night long, 
And then he said, I go, we can't wait to go to the coach and say, why in the hell are you designing this play for him? He's clearly off. And Bert said, do you have any idea what kind of shooter I am? What did you say? I went two for whatever. You know how do I was? It was automatic. Yeah. And that's the way DJ thinks, yeah. Pearl. Yeah. That is the way he thinks. It's like, I'm stalking the next shot. Let's go. I think that's the attitude, but I liked a piece that I heard as well. I don't even remember which last one of the last events he was playing. Maybe it was at the Masters. He had been working with somebody on his left to right putts. I think it was even even Greg Norman, because he was just kind of dragging yes. them. Yes, that is a huge deal. That is because a huge when deal. When you're cutting them and you're missing those left to righters, and you know you're going to miss those left to righters when you're missing those left to righters, you can't play at some place that it's going to go in, no. especially not at a, at a facility like that when the ball's moving that much. And anyway. so what we're talking about, folks, is cutting across the ball and giving it left to right spin on a left to right putt. Impossible to get it started on the line. Yeah, and inconsistent. You can't. It's tough to calibrate. There's been a few uh, Billy Mayfair through the years that, Floyd. that knew, you yep. know, and, and could cut it. Well, Corey Pavin. Pavin too. And yep. you know, played the cut. But yep. G- DJ's not really trying to play the cut. He's trying to hit a solid putt. No, that's an anomaly in his stroke. That is not the way he puts right to lefters. That's oh, why okay. that's okay. that's not the way. Pavin yeah. putted right to lefters, left to righters, all the same way. Cut it up into the, yeah. that right to lefter. Yeah. So just to clarify. So yeah. So I just think that's that's a huge deal. So uh, as great as this guy is, already number one player in the world, and he was able to find something that was a, somewhere in there, a kink in the armor that's not that kink anymore. You take it one more kink, and who knows if he can stay healthy, how long this could go on for. Well, that's going to wrap up the On the Range segment. Um, that was fun, Pearl. Uh, come back. We are going to have a little interview from Ed Wheatley, and uh, there are going to be more golf with Jay Delsing and John Perlis. Hi, this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Let your local farmer's insurance agent, Ed Fogelbach, put his experience to work for you. Ed Fogelbach proudly serves the St. Louis City, County, and Metropolitan area and any of their families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies or provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101 to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. In these extremely trying times, the management team at Marcone would like to give a shout-out to our 500-plus employees and their families. Their diligence and commitment to each other, our process, and our company are so good that we are obligated to state it publicly. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. You have all contributed to our success, and your dedication is imperative to the continued growth of our company. Thank you for your efforts. Marcone is the largest distributor of General Electric Appliance Parts in North America. Here's a shout-out of tremendous thanks to each Marcone regional sales manager, Vinny. Terry, David, Marvin, and Jeff, and their sales and service teams who keep Marcone customers stocked up and equipped with parts needed to keep their appliance service businesses humming. Thank you very much. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, The Ultimate Virtual Golfing Experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Golf Classic. And welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Delsing. I got John Perla sitting with me, and we're headed to the Front Nine. Brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Cannot wait. Still can't wait. September 2021. Going to be Big time, and you're going to get to see Pearly work. You know, meet we yeah, see Pearly go to the I'm Bahamas. We go oh. all of this other stuff. While you and I are slaving over here in St. Louis, and this guy's actually going to be carrying some luggage. Out I'm that excited week. for this. Is uh, is is he going to be carrying the entire bag the entire Ooh. way? Or oh no, he'll 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 throw some clubs out and. Uh, There'll be a hole I'll in the bag. whatever I can out. Maybe have a little cart pulled. Don't we get carts on the senior tour? I champions? think the players do. What? I think the players do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the players do, then hopefully their golf bag goes on. And me, when you're out there, you've got to ask him. As soon as you see him, just go, Pearly, where's the putter cover? <laughs> where's the, <laughs> oh my God. He gets so, he'll break out into this. His face gets all right. I don't <laughs> panic. As long as I know where the clubs are, I don't panic yeah. that much whether or not I don't know where the putter cover is. 
Well, we're going to have a blast out there. I want to thank Whitmore Country Club for supporting the show. 90 holes of golf at Whitmore. Uh, You have 36 at the facility in St. Charles. You also have access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardeen, the Golf Club of Wentzville. And, folks, no cart fees. They're already included. There's no food and beverage minimums. There's no assessments. Um, Oh, man. They've got just a great fitness area, two big pools, a uh, year-round social calendar with holiday parties, picnics, date nights, live music. They have the kids' club. They have uh, swim teams for the kids. They have golf teams for the kids, tennis teams for the kids. The kids' clubs are awesome. Those are becoming a big deal around the country where you can drop your children off. They get to hang out with other kids and swim and play golf and do whatever. And you can go have a little wine and go play golf and uh, do whatever the hell you want. So um, you got to get out there. you got to say hi to our buddy Bummer in the golf shop. And he and Ray... Uh, are doing just great stuff with the junior golfers out there. Ray Caddy's for uh, Harold Varner the third on the PGA Tour. It's a great guy, an Australian fellow married a St. Louis gal, so he lives back here. So get in touch with Bill Brungard at 636-926-9622 or visit them at whitmoregolf.com. All right, so we're going to go to this interview from Ed Wheatley. Ed is the president of the St. Louis Browns Historical Society and just a huge baseball fan. Well, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow! In your life have you seen anything like that? Ed Wheatley is brought to you by Golden Tee. My dad played for the Browns. I'm a huge baseball geek. But for most of the uh, people and the listeners out there, Tell us a little bit about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I know you wrote a really cool book as well. Well, we wrote a really cool book uh, called The St. Louis Browns, A Story of a Beloved. It got picked as the best book published in, on baseball in 2017 that led to actually not one, but two films about the Browns shown on PBS. The first one was basically their history, you know, the chronological story of the Browns, you know, how they came to St. Louis, their, their rise, their downfalls, and then leaving. And then the second one was we had actually set viewership records in St. Louis for this film on, on PBS. They asked us, is there more to tell? Let's do something. Uh, and we did one called A Baseball Legacy. Fans remember the St. Louis Browns. And that one I wanted to be a little different. It was kind of almost like an antique road show where we talked to different people, you know, who watched him. You know, sometimes it was uh, – the players themselves, our family of players. And, you know, it was stories, fans remembering the Browns, bringing pieces of, you know, memorabilia. And we just found out last uh, last Thursday that uh, we got uh, another nomination for uh, that film. Uh, it was an Emmy nomination, Mid-America Emmys. And we actually had the same Emmy nomination for our first film. And Cooperstown selected both films for uh, their annual film festival up up in new york and i've had the honor and um, very humbling experience of twice now speaking on the st louis browns at the national baseball hall of fame so uh there is an interest about this fan club i mean we last year at our annual luncheon we had over 400 people attending so it's the thing about the browns that's different than let's say the boston braves the philadelphia athletics you know places where Teams relocated. Now, their franchises honor them. You know, if you go down to Oakland, you know, there's the flag that Connie Mack won with the Athletics in Philadelphia. You go down to Atlanta, there's those uh, uh, stories and flags and pictures of, you know, Hank Aaron in Milwaukee, Warren Spahn in Milwaukee and Boston and Eddie Matthews. And if you go to the Dodgers, oh, my God, you know, they're honored is really all, you know, the Brooklyn Dodgers, you know, Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, Gil Hodges, Duke Snyder. They remember all that. The Orioles do nothing for the Browns. And, they, you know, you won't even find a pennant honoring the 1944 American League Championship. Uh, they don't honor the great players of the Browns. And the Browns do, did have great players. There's 15 men associated with the Browns in, in, the, in the Hall of Fame. And it's something that we try to do, whereas there are no active participatory meetings or even fan clubs for some of those teams that I just mentioned that relocated. So why is ours so unique? And I think it's really 
St. Louis's love of baseball and the memory of this team. Now, there were periods in baseball histories they were good and perhaps even great, but for most of their history, they were the lovable losers long before the Cubs tried to use that moniker for themselves. And, I, you know, it was always this diehard, this is the year, and the, listen to these people and these fans' stories is what it's about. And because, you know, our team does not have a major league franchise carrying the legacy and tradition, it's up to us. And I think that makes us more emboldened. And like I said, it's, uh, you know, they have 700-plus participatory people involved in our activities. You know, they have a luncheon, you know, of over 400. It's a, it's a very special thing to remember the Browns. Remember guys like your dad, you know, his career and all these guys. Otherwise, uh, like the movie, our first film, which uh, was on PBS, John Hamm, was our narrator. You know, it was titled The St. Louis Browns, a team baseball forgot. Well, they're not forgotten anymore. No, and congratulations on keeping this legacy alive. And it's interesting, you know, the the fact that the Orioles don't do anything to represent uh, the, the Browns. And one of the things I wanted to say, Ed, is that the Browns had some damn good players. Like you said, 15 people associated with the club have made it into MLB Hall of Fame. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you know, George Sisler, one of the greatest men to ever play baseball, you know, one of the greatest by far. I mean, you know, if you go through the records when they had that 1939 ceremony uh, for the first induction ceremony in, in Cooperstown, you know, they, were, they had them all there and they were in a gathering and they were kind of like talking about this. Who would you pick if you had to draft a team? You know, Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth both said George Sisler would be their first pick. Tremendous hitter, tremendous fielder. You know, and, you know, it continues. One of the things, uh, a story my dad used to tell me all the time, and I think um, what, before I say this, is the things that you're talking about that make the Browns special are really indicative to me of what makes St. Louis special. And there's no question that we're a baseball crazy town, but the base, St. Louis loves their own. You know, and they and mm-hmm. they do all they can to remember and respect their own, and I think that's one of the things that I really love about this town. Well, they, uh, you have a very smart baseball town in St. Louis. I mean, you know, it's, you grew up with listening, you know, to Jack Buck, Harry Carey, all the way going back to France Locks and all these guys from the 20s. And you had the power of KMOX radio. Most of the time they were in KWK earlier in their career. But, you know, it was just this intelligent uh, baseball town and it's one of the things you know I've written uh, one of my other books that I've written is called Baseball in St. Louis Little Leagues to Major Leagues and you know St. Louis just this dy- dynamite high school uh, population of baseball unbelievable you know there was a time in the major leagues in the late 40s and early 50s there were more men from one high school in the country than any other high school and that high school was Beaumont High School in St. Louis and then there were all the American Legion uh, teams that were playing for the national championship you know there were multiple championship appearances and winners from st louis and if you just look at you know beside you know around and you probably growing up in st louis with the association with that all the men who made the major leagues and it's just this thing like you know hey i might have gone to u city and i played with or i even batted against ken holtzman or there was rickner high school and jerry royce and ron hunt and it's just this thing of list of men who You know, we're just these local guys in the city. And then you were also, you know, while the Browns only won World World, uh, Pennant and played in one World Series, you had the Cardinals. Next to the Yankees, the Cardinals are the best winning dynasty. You know, when you look at the 20s and 26, 28, 30, 31, 34, 42, 43, 44, 46, there was this run of three decades. The Cardinals were generally in the World Series, if not every year, every other year, which just brings the attention and, the, you know, the, the loyalty and exposure to baseball. Yeah, it, it really does. And I, I know the story about Eddie Goodell and my dad being the pinch runner and uh, Bill DeWitt, this, you know, the uh, Bill DeWitt Jr. Uh, being the bat boy and just, just terrific, terrific memories. And tell our listeners, please, how they can get a hold of your books and how they can support the St. Louis Browns Historical Society. Uh, you can email stlbrowns at swbell.net 
you can put in an inquiry about the book or the films or even joining the fan club and uh, we'll send you the information. You know, we have a website, dstlbrowns.com. Okay, so Pearl, obviously this is sentimental to me with sure, Dad. Should be. We've also had, there's also that connection with the DeWitt family. You know, here's we've got Bill DeWitt. One of the funniest things is him trying to say, you listen to golf with Jay Dell. He's like, I don't know. What, what the hell? What's the name of your show again? Um, but his dad, the current owner of the Cardinals, was on the field at the same time as my dad was. He was the bad boy and also gave his jersey to Eddie Goodell. And so the original Bill DeWitt um, was the general manager of the uh, of the Browns. And so, uh, yeah, gosh, I can remember my mom and dad going to these little uh, luncheons and uh, cocktail parties and things like that. And, uh, yeah, it was always kind of just kind of a part of my uh, my past. And uh, the one thing that struck me, Pearl, so the Browns move uh, from here in 53 and go to Baltimore and become the Baltimore Orioles. Do you know which is – which is because franchises have moved – Sure. Right. Sure. You know, the Dodgers sure. are going from Brooklyn to L.A. Sure. and all this stuff. But the funny thing is about um, the Orioles is they're they don't display. They don't house or show any sort of Browns memorabilia for their past. So that's more associated just than with St. Louis, with the Cardinals one way or the other. Well, no, what I'm saying is the, the I know what you mean. But so who's adopted it or is it just floating out there? Who's adopted what? The Browns, this 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 history. Oh, right. The, what I'm saying is kind of floating out there. You'd think the Orioles, because that is who they were. It almost be like oh, yeah, we're gonna just- kind of. Except it wasn't there. You know, it was done here. So there's been more adoption, obviously, uh, by the founding family to kind of keep things going. And uh, I think it's rich. I think it's. I get your question because it's it kind of set the stage. Yeah. Even though, yeah, it left, but it was still baseball here. It was still important yeah. stuff. Still, yeah. still, I don't look at it. It's interesting when, when I know more of the story now. I, I love the fact that, uh, sure, they, they, I just thought they changed the name. I didn't know of all the moving around and all that stuff. I didn't really care. Baseball is here. It got established with that, and then it went on from there and call the franchise whatever they want to call the franchise. I still consider that the rich history of St. Louis baseball. Yeah, no, no, it's it's true. I mean, how crazy is, is it to think, I forget the year, it might have been like 44 or something around there where the Cardinals played the Browns in the World Series. Mm. Wow. An all St. Louis World Series. That's sure, pretty crazy. Sure. Um, okay, uh, so thinking about the rest of the show, you know, we got a whack and chase coming up. Thank goodness. I'm Glad, so glad we're getting back to whack and chases. Yeah, we we're just um, there. There are a lot of fun, and um, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. One thing I want to tell you um, is, I started wondering. You, you and I were talking about this off the air. When the hell is what in the hell is twenty twenty one going to look like from a spectator standpoint? No. From a and. Um, no already, different. No different till halfway through yeah, the year. Yeah, we've already we've already got we've already got word from California. Now there is there has been a change and it's a big one. Pro ams are back, so the fact that these tournaments can have pro ams, I can't say enough about the importance of these pro ams because not only does it give some local connection to that tournament from the community where the guys are playing with the tour players, they're out there playing these iconic golf courses in their community. But it also has a gigantic deal financially. It raises just a boatload of money. It's 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 just tremendously important. Imagine every single guy that's playing in the pro am is paying somewhere between two and ten thousand dollars each. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. And so many of these charities, Pearl, as you know, their entire year rides on on this stuff. And the ability to, you know, have a check written for that. And I think any progress that we can see of back to normalization is helpful. Now, it's not what we want, but it's moving in the right direction. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Even when, you know, I'm watch, you're watching football now. There's not a lot of fans in the stands, but in a lot of the stands, not all of them, there's some fans. We just have to keep moving in that direction. I'm yeah. not I'm not one of these that doesn't believe things aren't going to get fairly close back to to normal and the sooner the better for sure for all of us 
Yeah, it'll be so nice to be able to go, just go to a ball game again or go to a tour yeah. event or something. So September, Ascension Charity Classic, it's gonna feeling be a, pretty be good right about time. that. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. Yep. That's, that's probably going to be one of the early full-fledged events uh, coming at that point. Well, the field's going to be outstanding. Yep. It's going to be fun to be a part of it. Uh, that's going to wrap up the front nine. But uh, don't go anywhere. We've got a Whack and Chase segment coming on the back nine, and we also have the Michelob Ultra 19th hole. And this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Are your workouts more fun than this? Well, if they are, then I want to sign you to an endorsement deal with Michelob Ultra. I'm looking for anyone and everyone who makes working out a blast. If that's you, hit to TeamUltra.com for chances for awesome perks like Team Ultra gear and more. That's TeamUltra.com to enter. No purchase necessary. Open U.S. residents 21 plus. The official rules at TeamUltra.com. Message data rates may apply. Void but prohibited. Enjoy responsibly. 80 Michelob Ultra Lighter St. Louis, Missouri. Are you in the market for some new clubs? Maybe a bag and the latest style of sweet new shoes? Is this a year you decide to stop listening to your buddy's advice and go get some real golf instruction? If any of these appeal to you, then go to Pro-Am Golf today. Pro-Am Golf has some of the latest gear from all the major manufacturers like Titleist, Ping, Callaway, and Cobra in their retail store. You will be amazed at their selection. Call Craig today at 314-781-7775 and schedule a lesson with Tom DeGrand. Tom is the best. He's been in the in the business for over 50 years. So you take that knowledge along with their state-of-the-art cameras and equipment, and boom, your game's going to get a whole lot better. Visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs if you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. Joe Schieser has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. Okay, so you and your family are looking to join a country club. Well, I need to recommend to you Whitmore Country Club. They've got 90 holes of golf in the membership out there. You have access to the Missouri Bluff, the Links of Dardeen, the Golf Club of Wentzville, and all the cart fees are already included in your membership. There's no food or beverage minimums and no assessments. My friend Bummer in the golf shop is a phenomenal guy. You've got to go out and check him out. He and the staff out there run golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, couples events, Available all year round. There's a kids club in the main clubhouse, and they have a huge fitness center. There's three tennis courts if you're not into golf, a gigantic pool for you and your family to use. Year-round social calendar is spectacular. There's holiday parties, picnics, date nights, always have live music, and much, much more. If you're looking for a family-friendly, safe place to hang out, you got to check out Whitmore Country Club. Call them at 636 926 9622. Don't miss the hottest rookie class in PGA Tour Champions history. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Join legends Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson, and Hale Irwin to celebrate the PGA Tour Champions' newest event. Professional golf returning to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, pro-am foursomes on sale now. Visit Ascension Charity Classic Com. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is brought to you by Vogelbach Agency with Farmers Insurance. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me, and we are headed to the Back Nine. The Back Nine is brought to you by the Vogelbach Agency with Farmers. Um, man, we are really appreciate, appreciate Ed Vogelbach and his family. Uh, you need any sort of insurance product the uh, Fogelbach Agency is uh, is there for you. Um, we are going straight away to Whack and Chase. Jay, John, Whack and Chase back yet again. We've got a new guest, a new guy on the show. It's Steve from Lake St. Louis. Steve, hey, man, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we, uh, gosh, man, we've had a little... Uh, 
Vacation. We've had a vacation. Well, Pearlie well, knows a hell of a lot about happen. vacations. You know, Steve, we try to work a little bit over here. Hard work. Take a little hiatus. Pearly, we can't get Pearlie to come in from the road, you know, because he's traveling all the time. But we really appreciate you joining us today. Sure. Love the show. We're going to do a little whack and chase. Are you familiar with whack and chase, Steve? Yes, I am, John. Oh, good, perfect, perfect. Then uh, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, uh, kind of uh, – Help Jay formulate uh, an answer, and then we'll get down to the bottom of, uh, you know, what question do you have to go to him on your golf game? So first question is, just tell us a little bit. Give us a little background in your golf career to this point, Steve. Uh, So I seriously took the game up about three or four years ago, only played once or twice a year prior to that, and uh, have played quite a bit in the last few years and really come to enjoy the game. So uh, I wanted to call in and get some help with, one particular shot I'm struggling with. Okay, well, so what do you shoot now? What what kind of scores? What kind of handicap are you posting? Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. That's pretty darn good for wow. just playing a couple a couple times a year. What's the best part of your game? Uh, I would say my short game within a hundred yards. Wow. Dang, like that too. Okay, okay, absolutely. What's uh, what's the what's the shot that you just uh, just dread? Let's uh, put that out there so Jay can be thinking about it a little bit. What's kind of the question you've got for him? And then I got a few more questions for you. Sure, it's uh, on our course on the ninth hole. We've got bunkers about seventy to eighty yards out from the green, and it's anywhere from an eighty to sixty yard bunker shot up to the green. And I know when I go in that bunker, I'm in jail because I'm either going to fly the green or come up well short. Well, that's perfect. I, I know. I know those two shots as well, Steve. Well, I know that's a tough question. So let's just uh, get into a little bit uh, other things. How about when you're around the greenside bunkers? How are you in those bunkers? I'm pretty good, as long as it's probably within twenty, thirty yards. I'm pretty good, decent. So tell tell us a little bit about how do you approach those bunker shots that you're more comfortable with, the ones that are just off the green. What's your what's your approach to them? Uh, open the club face. Try to really focus on hitting a couple inches behind the ball and do a full swing. Nice, very good. Do you take lessons in general? How did you get to an eighteen handicap? Are you? Yeah, you, after uh, four years or three years, Steve, that's impressive. Uh, I've taken lessons, and uh, my pro, when he first started working with me, told me it was probably a good idea for me to take up tennis. So it's been a, <laughs> it's been a long journey. Smart ass, and then he still had to pay him. So that doesn't. That's, yeah, that's, that's a right. tough one. That's a that's tough right. one for sure. Who do you? What kind of guys are you playing with? You playing in different this Saturday morning group? You playing a couple times a week uh, with these guys? Do you like to gamble at all when you're out there with your group? Uh, my gambling is more donating, so uh, I try not to do that too much. But I play with a regular group every Saturday morning, and then uh, another regular group on Wednesday nights. So they send an Uber for you or uh, a cab? <laughs> a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want you to stay a while, I guess, once you're there. So absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, Jay, I think you've got some uh, some critical uh, information that you needed to uh, to start solving Steve's, uh, by the way, everybody's problem from 60 to 70 yards out. And I have a solution after you come up with yours. Yeah, well, first of all, Steve, you're talking about what we tour players will consider the hardest shot in in the game. However, we're not going to back away from this thing. We're going to we're going to take take it on. What happens to me is I try to not have this shot. I know that sounds you know ridiculous. That was my solution for the record. I, I really try to not have this shot. But okay, let's say you know we um, well we do we have it. And so Steve, I'm trying to think of those bunkers. Do you are they pretty flat lies? Or are they kind of upslopey? Uh, I know this is probably going to sound obvious, but the closer you are to the front of the lip, it gets probably a four foot rise. Right, but right. Usually, I'm to the back part of the bunker, so I would say it's more flat than an uphill shot. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I would I would consider I would want you to try to do is first of all. Go in there with something other than your 60-degree wedge. And I don't know if you're doing that. If you just – a lot of guys I see, when they get into a greenside bunker, they automatically will take their 60-degree wedge, even though you've got a 60- or 80-yard shot. Do you go in there – have you tried various wedges? Have you tried maybe your middle or your even a pitching wedge? Or even a 9-iron. 
Yeah, my pro actually told me to try an 8-iron, and I tried that with limited success. Usually when I catch it, I fly the green. Right, and so here's the problem. What we love about our sand wedges is they have this bounce. So the bottom, as as you were playing some of your other bunker shots and said you were playing them well, you did exactly what you're supposed to do. Open it up a little bit, hit an inch or two behind it, and swing through. And the wedges are made to cut right through the sand. The problem is the 8-iron doesn't have much bounce. And it's either going to dig like crazy or you're going to catch it flush and it's going to go. So here's what I'm go- going to suggest. And... Th- one more question though before Steve. Do you ever get any chance to practice this shot? I know that's probably a no. I mean it's so hard. Um, no, and not enough. I probably should more. And why the other the other thing is why the hell Delsing, why the hell do I want to go in there and practice that shot? I can't hit it. But so here's what here's what I'm going to say. Most of the time when we're in greenside bunkers, I've got guys playing the ball more off their front foot. I've got them opening up a little bit. Steve, I want you to go in with either your your 60. I want you to try this with, I don't, do you carry three wedges, pitching wedge, middle wedge, sand wedge, or uh, L wedge, or do you have four wedges? How many wedges do you have? Three wedges. Okay, so what I want you to go in there uh, um, is go in there with your uh, your your middle wedge and start off with your middle wedge and I want the what I want to do which is going to be a little weird is I want you to put the ball a little further back in your stance and so what that's going to do is it's going to give first of all it's going to freak you out a little bit because it's not the typical way you, you play a bunker shot but the problem with this shot is it's not a typical bunker shot you need 60 to 80 yards on this thing you've got to have a hybrid sort of swing and that's why I want you to get the ball more towards the middle of your stance. I want you to use that middle wedge of yours, and I want you to pick out a spot about an inch behind the ball, an inch behind the ball, not two inches, because what happens then, Steve, is you're going to wind up swinging so hard because you're going to be moving so much sand. I don't want you moving a lot of sand. I want you thinking shallow, and then I want you to think a little half swing, but one thing that's critical is you've got to finish on your your right-handed, correct? Correct. Yeah, so, Bud, you've got to finish up on your left side. You can't stay back on your right because that's going to get the club face to flip and move all over the place. So we got to get, once you can regulate how much sand you're going to take out every single time, and it gets hard. Hell, sometimes you get quite a bit of an upslope. Sometimes you get it flat. Um, I would start with a flat shot, Steve, and almost pretend like this thing is staying in the fairway. The other thing is, Dig your feet in a little bit and get your feet really solid. And don't let your, your as you transfer your weight, we don't want it, We don't want your feet moving any because that's going to give you a fat shot every single time. And then what I want you to try to do is make a kind of a half swing out of there, but taking a little less sand. And that should help you by moving the ball back in your stance. It'll give you a little lower trajectory, but also give you a little more zip on the balls that's coming out. Makes sense. Are you, are you, does it feel like you're more nervous now, Steve, after that, or are you, you're ready to give it another shot? That's a lot for me to remember. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was great advice, but it's a tough shot. You know, Jay, this, this kind of beckons to when we talk in the spring about people, uh, when they get in the rough, just get the damn thing back in the fairway. Yep. Don't compound it, and especially, you know, 18 handicap-ish, that type of, that type of game. Just, just not compound this. You know, I think there's an argument uh, that he, gra- his, he grabs his, his 60, and just find, looks for the fairway, whacks it out to the fairway, and gets that thing up and down. Well, the other thing is, what do we deem a good shot? Anything on the green, Steve, from that bunker area, that's, a, that's, a, that's an A+. Plus. That's why I wanted to give you a club with a little more room for air. If you take your 60 in there, you can try it with your 60. It's just got a little less room for air because um, you can hit it a little bit heavy with that middle wedge and get enough drive on it to where it'll, where it'll get on the green for you. The next time you see those bunkers, pretend there's white stakes around them or red stakes or yellow stakes and just pretend like it's a hazard and stay the heck away from that darn thing. <laughs> I'll do that. Hey, Steve, you know what we tell everybody when they come on the whack and chase is if this advice helps you, take a billboard out on the highway, call the paper, call ESPN, tell everyone you know. But if you still keep hitting it fat and thin out of that bunker... Tell them we never met. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Have a great night. Thanks, guys.
Well, that'll do it for the uh, back nine. Don't go anywhere. John and I will be right back for the Michelob Ultra 19th hole. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The management team at Marcone would like to give a shout out to our 500 plus employees and their families. Their diligence and commitment to each other, our process, and our company are so good that we are obligated to state it publicly. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. You have all contributed to our success, and your dedication is imperative to the continued growth of our company. Thank you for your efforts. Marcone is the largest distributor of General Electric Appliance Parts in North America. Here's a shout-out of thanks to the Marcone customer service team nationwide, every day helping thousands of Marcone customers find the parts they need to keep America's home appliances washing, drying, baking, and cooking right into the holidays. Marcone Supply wishing everyone happy holidays and a prosperous 2021. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, the ultimate virtual golfing experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101 to see how they can help you stay in the game. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs if you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. Joe Schieser has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. Are you in the market for some new clubs? Maybe a bag and the latest style of sweet new shoes? Is this a year you decide to stop listening to your buddy's advice and go get some real golf instruction? If any of these appeal to you, then go to Pro-Am Golf today. Pro-Am Golf has some of the latest gear from all the major manufacturers, like Titleist, Ping, Callaway, and Cobra in their retail store. You will be amazed at their selection. Call Craig today at 314-781-7775 and schedule a lesson with Tom DeGrand. Tom is the best. He's been in the in the business for over 50 years. So you take that knowledge along with their state-of-the-art cameras and equipment, and boom, your game's going to get a whole lot better. Visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. Professional golf returns to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club, September 6th through the 12th. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, and pro-am foursomes are on sale now. All proceeds go to North St. Louis County Charities. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com or call 314-938-2828. PGA Tour Golf is back in the loo. The Ascension Charity Classic. A couple of months ago, I received some really good news. My friend Henry Miller from the law firm Grant Miller Smith had represented me in yet another round of legal wrangling from my divorce of almost 15 years ago. I felt as if I was being unfairly burdened by the maintenance I was paying. Not only did they think so, but so did the judge. I cannot tell you how good this feels to be relieved of all that pressure. If you find yourself in any type of situation regarding your marriage or your children, do yourself a favor and call 314-788-3030 and set up a complimentary appointment. Henry Miller is smart, hardworking, and most importantly, he'll listen to you. They knew my case in and out. They were fair and honest. We had an odd situation occur where I had paid for something that was no longer allowed to be used in the case. They quickly and fairly disposed of the charges and got back to the business of helping me with my problem. Pick up the phone and call 314-788-3030 or visit them at grantmillersmith.com. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. 
Welcome back to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm Jay. Pearly sitting with me. We got Brad Barnes meet. He's taking great care of us here at the ESPN studios. And we're in the Michelob Ultra 19th hole, man. Um, yeah, Pearly, how's that cold one taste? It's always takes always t- <laughs> <laughs> always tasting fresh. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I've got to give a shout out to Bart Inman. And you guys are going to go, what? where is he going here? Okay, so on Thanksgiving Friday, before the match was supposed to come on, my girlfriend's... Bart Inman, give us a little feedback. I'm, I'm going to tell... I'm gonna, I'm, my, my, my girlfriend's furnace just poops out. So he's a furnace completely, guy. Completely gone. We're trying to figure out who, what, where to... Friday after Thanksgiving, really? And we got Saturday, Sunday coming, holiday, what? We call Bart Inman, and within... An hour, you know who knocks on the front door? Bart Inman, the owner of the company, walks in, goes down the basement, assesses what's going on, tells us what to do, tells us how to do it. Not that that was going to do us any good, but and uh, and then gives us an estimate. Now we called their website out of the blue. And left a message. And on Friday, they called us within 30 minutes. His ex-wife, Julie, runs the board over there. She is unbelievable. And I'm just going to tell you, in a day and age where everybody wants to bitch and complain and moan about this, that, and the other thing not working, uh uh-uh. You guys need a furnace. You need anything. This guy is unbelievable. He comes right to your house, and he is as real as it gets. And... um, He's a, a, a South County guy, and um, he was just terrific. So his number, Bart Inman, it, it's Inman Air, 314-293-2600. Couldn't believe it. That's awesome. He couldn't believe it. It was, it was just a great experience. Um, all right, so the Whack and Chase was fun. It's Absolutely. Back. We Absolutely. Got, we got Steve all screwed up. He'll be in the bunker, you know, digging, <laughs> like, digging castles. Well, he and threw out that that's what he wanted help on. I'm oh, thinking, my gosh. I'm not sure anybody. Thing. You know, it's interesting because you'll see that. First of all, on tour, you don't see it very often because the guys know not to get in that situation. Right. But when they do, you know, there's always this next level of t- tension. If you ever, like, watch a caddy during this, too, the caddy's oh, yeah. always real nervous because he's thinking, well, I'm probably going to be raking another bunker after this. There's no doubt. Uh, and or the other caddy's got to jump in because this ball's probably not going to go on the green, so somebody else has to jump in while you're fixing that bunker. Yeah, just nothing. Very seldom do you see somebody really, really pull that shot off. And I would challenge, you can vouch for this, I don't think a lot of tour guys, you said to, to Steve, just getting it on is a good shot. I think a lot of tour guys, they're not even thinking, as good as they are, I'm going to hit this thing close. Are they? Aren't they mostly just trying to go like, I'm I don't want to catastrophe to hit it. I'm here. trying to hit it close because if I pull it off, it comes out. But but for the most part, you know how that shot goes, Pearl. 95% of them are hit fat and yep. come up short. Yeah, well, yeah you're not going to see those guys normally skinny it. Because right. that's no, because that, that'll, that'll, normally that'll, thin to win, but not on that roll, shot. That'll run up your score. Yeah, Yeah, sure. that'll run up your score. Um, I had a couple of interesting things that I dug up. Um so, was we'll, doing we'll let you know in a minute if they're interesting. Go yeah, ahead. I thought they were interesting. We were uh, it was checking out, trying to see what the year was going to be like, you know, and what, who, what, who's what and where. And the the, the beginning part of 2021 PGA Tour schedule starts in California, and they're locking everything down. And so, for the most part, um, the uh, d- the Desert Classic down in Palm Springs is going to be no spectators. Story Pines is going to be no spectators. But we did, we were able to sneak in pro-ams, which is a really big deal. But one of the things that I came across was that Phil, DJ, and Bryson have already signed up to play in the Saudi International. It's the, uh, it, it, it's going to, you know, that's tough traveling into the Middle East. And so there's, that's going to really impact two events, Farmers and Phoenix Open. So how tough is it for them traveling to that part of the world? Maybe for the rest of it's it's tough, but when they're getting so, you know they're going to get some kind of a charter. There's going to be a bed involved where they're just kind of crashing and doing their thing and doing their computer work. So it's a little bit different. And aren't they getting some uh, casiola probably up front? Isn't that? Oh, big time. Yeah. So that's what I was going to ask you. How much money do you think world number one Dustin Johnson would get for coming over? How many many (laughs) weeks is he playing over there? I think just one. Two of, oh, just going to miss two events here, but just be over there for the one event. More than likely, yeah. I don't know. I guess they're going to give them a million? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It'll be a boatload. Wow. But you know what, Pearl, what's interesting is when we were playing the PGA Tour, do you remember when 
Dean Beeman, our commissioner at the time, said, any of you foreign players that want to play over here have to play at least 15 events to get your membership. Yep. And none of the foreign studs, Langer, um, Bel- Faldo, Ballesteros, Ballesteros Olathabal, none of them ever did that. You want to know why? Because they're making too much guarantee over there. They, those guys were played, paid guaranteed money to play on their home tour. There were also the big shots over there. No, they I'm were going to be in the top that, couple every exactly. week. They, but these know. guys were struggling for fields. Yep. Their field depth wasn't wasn't good at all, right. and they needed headliners. And basically, the European tours, it's just a few years behind ours, but they, they've, they've done a nice job. I love watching the European uh, tour, yeah. tour in golf. Well, there's also all kinds of uh, – Political implications of of that maneuver for those boys and all that kind of stuff, which personally, I hate all that. I think you want to go play someplace, go play someplace, act act accordingly, and uh, you'll 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 spread the word that way. Yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for that. You know, they're talking about human rights, this, that, the other thing. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are going to try to play golf and try to you know entertain, be, be stewards of the the game of golf. Exactly, and that's always a positive thing. We that's what we talk about all the time. It brings in uh, money. It brings in awareness. It brings in uh, people getting involved in a real positive thing, the, the game of golf. Yeah. Okay, so I got another thing for you. Was that interesting? Oh, I thought that was very interesting. Okay, wonderful. One, one, get Pearly so far, you're one, you're one for Two. one. We'll see how one the second one. one goes. Yep. All right, perfect. Uh, our buddy, I guess we can say our buddy, Jim Nance. Well, definitely your buddy and the show's buddy for sure. And I already know I'm going to like this story. Okay, so Jim Nance lives in Carmel. We hate him for that. My favorite place in the whole it's world. Such a great spot. My favorite if, place if, in the if whole If anybody world. out there, because we're going to have another show on bucket list golf courses and where to go play and that kind of stuff, you got to go there. You, you got to go, go drive there. 17 you mile to. drive. I'll you tell you what, to. if you're a, a golfer of long standing, I, I think you'll be hard pressed not to get to tear up when you drive 17 mile drive. And even if you can't play for whatever reason, Pebble, just go find a parking spot, walk through the uh, the bar area, and go uh, walk around and check out the 18th hole. It's absolutely spectacular, and it's a bucket list regardless of you, whether or not you're playing. I enjoyed it. I have to tell you, I enjoyed it as much caddying that, that 18th hole as I did play in it. Seriously, yeah. just because it's such a gorgeous place on this earth. Oh, it, it, it truly is. And uh, Jim Nance lives out there, and there's a guy with his buds playing on the 14th hole, the long par 5. And Jim Nance, what is this? Is what the kind of guy is. He gives him. He just walks up to him. He just walks up and and just starts calling his game <laughs> with his buddies. <laughs> and he says he savages a drive around the corner on 14, you know, and hits it way down there. These guys are just yucking it up. And he also says, um, and you know, gives the guy's name, and he leads Woods and Kepka by one here on Championship Sunday, and just in that. Tra- That's dramatic awesome. voice and 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 just goes the extra mile to tell this story and to do this whole thing and uh, oh my gosh it's just uh, just made this guy's life and I, I pull up some further info on it to try to dig a little deeper and they show him on the 14th tee pearl he's teed up six inches in front of marker <laughs> <laughs> he's out of his mind already oh, well, from Nance's from, from Nance's perspective that tells me how much he loves what he does that he would just go out and do that which says to me why one reason he's so good at what he does because he loves what he does so much and just that entertainment and you've told me stories about him and spending time around him the guy just he he appreciates his position and his impact on the game and our enjoyment of the game. And he takes it very, very seriously, doesn't he? Oh, my gosh, Pearl, he's been doing it for 35 years. Yeah. And But you know what? You could clip coupons, put your feet up, oh, mail yeah. this thing in. Ten, over, this ten times over. dude does not mail in one no. thing. No. And that's, you know what, John? That's when you start those conversations of the greatest of all time, the goats and things like that. That's it. That's, it is that's a, how you get there. How do you, yeah. how do you not... He is human. How do you not get complacent? How do you not feel like crap? I've got a headache. I've got a fight with my, you know, my doesn't kids. Matter. I've got doesn't matter when nope. you when you're the goat. You're, nope. you're either the goat or you're not the goat. Yep. And goats don't get headaches and other issues that are going to uh, disrupt them. Well, maybe that's uh, one of the charges charges we need to do on the show. Maybe we need to start putting him up there as. Uh, is a goat? We'll call him. Is, is a goat in training? I mean, we're it, he's got a lot of years left. Is what I'm saying. So yeah, I, think, I mean, I, I think, don't know. I mean, he's got. You know, you think about what he does. He does March Madness. Hello, how fun is that? Yeah. 
He does. He does the fun the stuff. NFL. He does the fun stuff. The fun games. Does the, the fun Masters. Events. And he does all these great <laughs> tour events, man. He he is just um, what a but, what a gig. But he's got to be. He's got to get in he's in that category, isn't he? He is for me. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. yeah. I I agree. I I agree. He's uh, he's his voice on TV is like having your family in the house. You know, you put it on and you're like, oh, okay, Jim Nance is calling the game. It's interesting. We talked about this a little bit a while ago. So you got Nance, who is, who is teammates and roommates with one of the better players of all time in couples. And then I had mentioned to you between Gretzky and DJ, father-in-law yeah. and son-in-law, how two of the greatest, you know, I'm not saying DJ is necessarily the greatest, but he's certainly one of the best. Uh, certainly now he is, yep. obviously number one. Obviously, Wayne Gretzky being the best, I think, of all time there and just spectacular. It's just interesting how, you know, they always say, you know, be careful who you're hanging out with and and, uh, and, and try to sw- swim we with the big We should have thought about that a lot, a lot of years we, ago. we keep hanging out with each other. That's well, why that's we're not a going problem. anywhere. I know. Damn. Well, and we're not going anywhere because this show's over. Uh-oh. Yeah, thanks for uh, for joining me, Pearl Mead. Thanks so much for taking care of us. And um, uh, come back next week for more Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis. You know what this is? A commercial? Right, and you know what that means. <gasps> Time for a snack? Wrong. I want you to do some heart-healthy exercise. Yes, you. Try some seated leg extensions right now. Just lift each leg up and extend it straight, one at a time, six to eight times. I can do that. Yes, you can. Remember, every commercial is a chance to sneak in heart-healthy activity. Visit findexerciseanywhere.com and speak with your doctor to learn more about the risks of heart failure. When the weather outside is frightful, the Hyundai Santa Fe is, hmm, what's the word? Delightful. Because it's got available H-Track all-wheel drive to make being out together better. Enter for your chance to win the newly redesigned Santa Fe, packed with all the jingle bells and whistles you need to go dashing through the snow together. To enter, visit Amazon.com slash Hyundai or scan the QR code on specially marked red and green Amazon boxes. No purchase necessary. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.